America has joined an exclusive America. club which includes Syria and Nicaragua. They're the only countries not in the climate change Paris Agreement. Donald Trump promised he'd do this, and now he has. Around the panel, what do you make of the US pulling out of it? John O'Neill. Um, look, I think it's actually really sad when you've got a, a leading country in the world who's pulling out of something that everybody else is bought into. Um, I think, though, what we've really got to look and say, is that going to affect anything that we're doing? No, it isn't. We're still committed to our agreements under Paris, so we're going to go through and with what that. what about the world? I think the world has got to a point where they're not necessarily going to follow whatever Donald Trump says they should do. So they're going to do their own thing. And what we'll even find, I imagine, is a lot of businesses, a lot of states, a lot of individuals Which is what's within happening. the United States uh, are going to do their own way anything. What, so what, I think we just ignore what, them and what carry did, on. What did you make of it, Stuart? I think it's very sad. You know, this is a country that people look to for global leadership, and they've let us down. OK, Marama, what do you reckon? Um, I reckon that Donald Trump is another... It's a further indication... That do, he's bullying, you, who you, he's bullying who you, me. Who are you Ooh, waving at? Helen Lay. <laughs> Yay! Oh. All right, anyway. So, um, Donald Trump... Donald Trump is a further indication that he's living in the past. Next thing you know, he'll be wanting to bring back the VHS. I mean, but they are the second <laughs> biggest emitter right. of greenhouse gases in the world, and they must be part of the solution. All right, before, before, speaking of, before we go to our guest, John National, the budget, committed $4 million to climate change. Some would call that disgraceful. It is the biggest problem of our time, four million bucks. Yeah, it's, it's, what, what, it's not just about money, it's about practice. It's a, oh, all right, so actually what are we doing? We're actually going to be planting more trees. We are investing, um, we're waiting for the Productivity Commission, obviously, to come back to look at some economic ways that we can look at um, reducing our greenhouse gas emissions. There's stuff going on, um, and we're absolutely, as I say, committed to uh, the Paris Your commitment is tar cutting emissions by 11% of 1990 levels by 2030. These guys here... 40%. Absolutely. It's responsible. We used to be global leaders in this, and now we're laggards. Is it doable? Absolutely. Is it doable? Absolutely. How? 40%? Look, look, we used to be global leaders in this area under the Clark government, under the last Labour government. We led the way, and now we're seen as... Now we're seen as laggards. In Paris, we got a huge telling off from you the international the community the because we're not CB. doing our bit. That's not the New Zealand way. All right, Mother, we'll come to you, but let's go back. Let's go to our guests first, and uh, we will come to you. Wallace, I've got two climate change specialists from Victoria University here. Firstly, Dave Frame, you're a specialist on policy, aren't you, on climate change? Um, yeah, I guess, yep. So what do you think <laughs> of this? <laughs> well, if you're not, who was I supposed to talk to? <laughs> Just joking. So what do you think? Climate change agreement, is it, is it a big deal that America aren't part of it? Uh, it's less of a big deal than it would have been under Kyoto. So I think um, one of the things they thought of in drafting it was what would happen if um, a big player defected and um, didn't play by the rules. And so they kind of designed it so that um, the legal force that would come is from that country's own laws and that it was much more resilient in the face of this sort of um, action. So... So it's not the end of the world then, no, that America out? They saw it coming to some extent, I think, probably, that given America's weird politics on this. Um, but uh, it's, it's going to be an effective way, I think, of marshalling um, people towards a low-carbon future. So. So I don't think in the long run it'll change outcomes. I think it'll um, make him look a bit of a fool um, if he hasn't already done that. But um, I think, you know, I think uh, the rest of the world will step into that uh, leadership gap and um, get on with building a low-carbon future. Awesome. And Tim Nash, you um, specialise in Antarctica for climate change. I do. And so tell me, for those people that don't believe in climate change, like Trump, they think yeah. it's a you know, cob wobble, mm. what do you say to them? Well, I say they're wrong. As simple as that. Well, you know, if you th there's various ways of explaining this, but if you simply go to the science, the science is incontrovertible on this. The world is warming, and the world is warming because of us, and that's as close as we get in science to a fact. So why does Trump say it's not there then? Well, it's politics. It's not based on the science. It's he's based on... Um, he's been listening to David Seymour. Oh. <laughs> Don't you that was that Stuart. That wasn't me. That was Stuart who said that. I saw David Seymour in the house. I'm going to go have to find him very soon. <laughs> but yeah, so it's totally based on science. Absolutely. In fact, Dave and I get pretty upset with this because the conversation needs to move on. We, we, we've got to have David Frame. We've got, to, we've, got to, we've got to stop arguing about whether climate change is happening and whether it's because of us. The discussion is around what we'll do about it. Exactly. The Paris Agreement gives exactly. us... Yeah. Pa the Paris Agreement um, is fantastic. I think it gives a huge amount of opti optimism. It's still just good intentions. These pledges have to be delivered on, and that's, yeah. that's what really matters. Yeah. 
And I'm a bit on Dave's camp here. You know, when it comes to the US, they are so heavily invested in what the Paris Agreement stands for at the state level and at the city level that um, I don't think it's going to derail things too much either. Thank you. All Thank right. you so much for coming on. Hey, round of applause for Dave and Tim. Yeah. Really cool. Thanks for coming on the show, guys. Really. Hey, before you go, quick question. Oh, quick question from me, Charlotte, to Tim. Yeah, right. Quick question from me, Charlotte, to Tim. To hey, Tim. Tim, you're, you're the Antarctic Air Group, briefly. Yeah. That big crack, that big okay. crack that's going all on Antarctica, um, should we be worried? Well, OK, uh, look, scientists always do this, yes and no. <laughs> oh, right, OK, all right, all right. <laughs> too long, too long. Us on the panel. Oh, all right, yeah, <laughs> yes. I'll ask the panel, I'll ask the panel. The I'll ask the panel. How pessimistic are you, Marama, about climate change? I'm not pessimistic at all because I'm an oh. optimistic type of person, but you know what we... So it's not happening? Well, or? but no, no, of course it's happening, but what we established in Parliament is a cross-parliamentary group... Uh, uh, this guy. Yeah, I'm going to come over there and talk to you soon. But um, <laughs> <laughs> He's making the troublemaker, this guy. Anyway, so we've got a cross-parliamentary uh, group called GLOBE who um, commissioned a report to say, what can we do in New Zealand to become zero carbon, carbon neutral? It's called the Vivid Report. It's got a number of policies, a number of strategies in it. What we need is all parties to commit to it so that we collectively in this country can commit to carbon zero. That sounds fair enough. Stuart? Sounds fantastic, doesn't it? The thing is, is like you say, Nikki Ragra, who are already exceeding their targets, Syria, well, they've got some problems. Um, every other country apart from the states has signed up to this. This is a, you know, has the world worked together in a way like this before? I doubt it. It is very real. We have created it and we can do something about it. I'm optimistic, like Madam, I'm yep. optimistic that we can reverse this, but we've I, got to go now. Just, just to get a couple of audience members there, uh, Charlotte, what, what, what do they think of the audience? I mean, are they pessimistic around climate change or, well, or, found, or, or optimistic? Well, I found a bunch of top, uh, you know, people, the Opportunities <laughs> Party. So oh, we've got an Opportunities oh, Party. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> it's the full membership. Yeah, so what do you think? <laughs> you, you've actually, <laughs> you've got a sign. I do. I think, I think that there's loads of opportunities to be optimistic if people uh, lobby at a political level, make big change, but also uh, individually. There are choices that we can make every single day. Like what? Like eating plant-based diets. Okay, so being vegan, no meat. Animal agriculture is the biggest contributor to climate change. We're waiting for politicians to make changes. Well, we can make changes every single day. Meat's really good for iron and like good for people's bodies. Uh, the animals you get that iron from got it from plants. And our economy. Beef is huge for New Zealand. Yeah. So imagine what a great opportunity is to work with our farmers to transition to sustainable industries. I'm worried about our farmers are saddled with lots of debt. They have depression and suicide is terrible. Let's help our farmers into sustainability, not just for themselves personally, but for our environment. Look at our rivers. Look at our environment. Look at our soil. Well, there you go. Back to you, Wallace. Hey, very, very cool. Very interesting stuff. Hey, just, just before you, picking up on a point there about uh, getting beyond agriculture, mm. a meat-based agriculture in New Zealand to cut down our emissions drastically, around the panel, is that a go in the future, John O'Neiller? Well, I mean, what we've got to do is actually take a balanced Quickly. view of it. So in Palmerston North, we've got the Agricultural Sciences um, Greenhouse Gas Centre. They're working on solutions. All right, Stuart Nash? No, it's not a go. But what we can do is use technology to stop the farting and the burping. All right. OK. Um, diversify what you do on your farm so the farmers are not tied down to one product only and when that goes bust they fail and kill themselves. But oh. one thing in the RMA, Manawhaka Hunawaro here arrangements means that every single local and regional council must make a plan to protect their resources with their local right, airway. Hi. Finally. Fantastic, fantastic.